Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I am a senior software support analyst supporting the IBM Transformation Extender product. Today's topic is using the Azure Blob storage adapter with ITX. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. So let's start with an overview of the Microsoft Azure services. I'm here at portal.azure.com and the first app that I'm going to go into is Storage Accounts. Within Storage Accounts I've created one storage account called IBM Storage One and then within IBM Storage One I can click on Containers to view the containers within it. I have one container called IBM Container One and then within that I have a blob name which is an object which currently has zero bytes sitting in it. Back to the storage account IBM Storage One and if I click on the access keys setting here this connection string which you can copy to the clipboard by clicking on this icon contains quite a lot of details that we will transfer to the map settings later to pick up and uh, put the uh, objects that we want to use with uh, Azure Storage. On to the next part of the demonstration now and here we have the Transformation Extender Design Studio. I have one project called Azure Blob and then within that project I have a standard utility type type tree with uh, text blobs that I can use and a map called azureblob.mms. Within that source map I have two executable maps test1 put and test2 get. So test1 put reads from the file adapter and reads a file called input.txt simple file with uh, two lines of text in it. The output adapter has several flags for the Azure storage adapter to work. Let's see if we can make that as wide as it can be and get, if not all of it, most of it in. Okay, right, so we start with access name IBM Storage One, which is what I created in storage accounts. Access key, which is this long string uh, ending in a double equals there. That's uh, also part of that string that I showed you in the access keys section. Um, endpoint core.windows.net. I'll switch back to the um, Azure window and show you where that information is stored. Um, it, it is actually part of this string. It's called the endpoint suffix. Back to the map designer. Um, EP is the protocol that's going to be used for transfer, and that is also part of the string that was on the Azure console. Um, then we've got our container name, IBM Container 1. Uh, write mode, we're going to use block underscore blob. Dash O to overwrite anything that's there. Dash B to give the, the name of the um, object that we're going to write. Um, it's a, we're just calling it blob name. And there's a block size here and a, finally a minus T to turn on adapter tracing should something go wrong. Okay, we'll come out of that map for the moment. Um, once again, I'll just quickly remind you that within Overview Containers, IBM Container 1, we have blob name already there but it's currently sitting at zero bytes. Back in our map, if we build and run let's before we run this map let's show you the content of the input file okay as I said just a couple of lines of text line one and line two nothing fantastic okay so if I build and run this map the map has completed successfully and if we switch back to our AWS console and hit the refresh key, did I just call it the AWS console? I meant Microsoft Azure console, of course. The blob name is still there, but now it's a size of 17 bytes. Okay, so that's the put map. Uh, quite happy to put objects into Azure storage. Let's go and have a look at the second map, 
test to get. We're going to have a look at the content of the input card. The adapter is set to Azure Blob Storage. Pretty much the same uh, a connection string. You've got the access name, the access key, the uh, endpoint suffix, the protocol, the container, the uh, right mode, block blob. And this is slumped something slightly different. Rather than dash O to overwrite, of course we're reading this time, I'm now putting the, um, the read method, which can either be keep or delete. And I've gone for delete. I've chosen the blob name because that's the one we chose for the put. And finally the block size and the trace is on there. Okay, so if I build and run this map, build, run, map completed successfully. Sorry, I should have mentioned that the output card on this particular one uh, writes to a file called output.txt. So let's have a look at the content of that file now that's just been updated. And it contains line one and line two. No surprises there. On the console, you will note that blob name, if I hit refresh, is now back to being zero bytes because of that RM delete option on the input card. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, a whirlwind tour of using the Azure Blob Adapter within the ITX10 Design Studio. If you set the class path appropriately, and by that I mean you add on all the jars that are in the subdirectory jars and then com.hcl.hip.adapters.m4 as blob, there are quite a few adapters, quite a few jar files in that, and you add them all to the class path. Then, of course, the command server can also run the same maps um, that the uh, design studio could, and by extension, um, any of the execution engines should be able to run the same thing. So there we go. Test one put. Map has completed successfully. Back to the console. It says zero bytes. We hit the refresh. It says 17. Let's just do a quick override there. Let's do an dash input echo one. This is a test and I wonder if it will work. Okay, so I've got the um, problem now of that that's uh, too many characters and I need to put a strice for the string. So let's go um, take that one out and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4 characters. 44 characters. Okay, so let's just quickly change this to S44 and press enter. Hopefully this will work now. OK, map completed successfully. So I put 44 bytes in this time. If we refresh this screen, there, there we go. We see 44 bytes in the, in the blob name. So there we are running the same map at the command line with an override of an alternative string. At the command line, let's run the get map to get. And we'll override output card one of this map to write to a new file called newfile.txt and press enter and then we'll type new file.txt and it contains this is a test and I wonder if it will work 44 bytes we would hope just check uh, there it is the yes, yes new file.txt 44 bytes so there we go that's the command server running the same adapter next step is to show you the same map in IBM ITX 10 design server Here we are at the ITX design server, as you can see rendered in a browser. The version I'm using is 10.03, which is the first version that was delivered with the Azure Blob Storage Adapter. I'm going to import the project that we created in the previous uh, step from the design studio into the design server, rather than having to rebuild all those objects from scratch. OK, we're in our project. We've got the files input.txt, the type tree, utility, and our two maps, test1put and test2get. 
Neither of these maps need any changes. They will run exactly as they are. So I'm going to show that running now. Let's check our storage container. We can check and it is showing currently at zero bytes. Let's hit refresh. Yep, zero bytes. So I'm just going to build and run this map. So this has put the input.txt onto the container. Let's have a look at it now and refresh. And we see we have 17 bytes. Back to the design server and let's have a look at our second map, test to get. Before we execute this, um, I'm just going to show you the input card here. In the settings, the connection is as before, the Azure blob storage. Connection properties are now shown in fields, some of which are masked. And if I turn on the advanced option, you can see the additional property um, in the action properties section. Uh, let's turn that on and you can see the read mode is available which is currently set to delete that was that dash rm flag that i added earlier so let's turn that off um, let's turn that off there and that's fine there and click next and next and okay okay so this map as i say is ready to run we didn't really need to make any changes i'm going to save i'm going to build and I'm going to run. So this map test to get has retrieved the blob storage and delivered it to output.txt. Let's have a look at our output card. Here's the data, line one and line two. And if we have a look at our uh, container on the Azure portal and hit the refresh button, we can see that the bytes have gone back to zero. So not a lot different from the design studio there, the design server behaving exactly the same. Let's say we want to deliver these two maps to be um, invoked from the um, REST API. I am going to need to make a couple of changes. On test one put, I need to change the input card. I go into the settings, I go into the action properties and tell it to deliver the REST input to this card. Next, OK. That's all the changes I need to do in test one put. I can save and go to test to get. I want to define the output card to deliver to REST API. So I go into settings, I go into action properties, and I turn on REST output. Next, OK. This map isn't quite ready yet because there's no way to really um, execute this map and have the input delivered to the map via REST. We don't want to override the input card because we want that to go off to Azure Blob Storage and get the content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another source card. I'm going to call that card into. I'm going to choose the echo adapter. Um, within the map, I'm going to just compile in some dummy bytes. These won't get used, but this is where the REST input will be delivered to. Next. I'm going to choose my utility schema and from that schema just choose the text blob item. Okay, so we have a card in two now. Um, this is what gets the map um, executed and started, but the content of in two is just not used. In one is still running and it will still get the data from Azure Blob Storage and deliver the content to out one. That's all the changes I need to make to this map. Okay, so they're done. Let's go and put them into a package ready for deployment. Let's redo package one. Um, let's edit it, make sure the correct project is selected and the two maps, test one, test two, are selected. Okay, so that's my package ready. And uh, the final step is to actually deploy. From the deploy window, I've got a single server defined, local REST API. And before I actually deploy this package, I'm just going to show you the Swagger UI endpoints, which is this page here. Let's click refresh. And as you can see, there are currently no endpoints displayed. Back to the design server and I hit my deploy button get my deploy progress shown here and it says it's successful I shall close that back to my endpoints window and refresh and you will see that I've got four entries here two maps and two ways of invoking them synchronously and asynchronously 
Okay, just a reminder, the blob storage, if I hit refresh, currently has zero bytes in it. I'm now going to execute these maps via the REST API. Starting with test one put, click the try it out button. I'm actually going to override the data here and put in some additional something else, something new. Let's put in some XML. This is my string for the REST API to deliver to Azure Blob Storage. Actually, my map won't care that this is XML. It's just going to read the whole lot as a, as a string, but uh, I just thought I'd use XML for fun. Uh, let's put another space in there just to even it up. OK, so let's hit the Execute button. As you can see, the map completed successfully. Um, we've got nothing back from the REST API um, because the output card was set to deliver to Azure Blob Storage. Let's have a look in there. Refresh the screen, and you'll see we have 97 bytes. Fantastic. Let's retrieve those bytes. Let's go into the Swagger UI and collapse test one put and expand test to get. We click the try it out now button. Don't need to make any changes here. All I need to do is click the execute button. And as you can see, the map has executed in the REST API. If I click download file here, bring up that file in my downloads area and right click on that file and um, send to notepad open with, open with, open with, let's open with, <clears throat> let's open with notepad, turn that off, notepad, okay. So here we have the XML that was delivered to um, the REST API. Let, let's show that running at the uh, command line using curl. Um, one quick note, uh, the if I refresh the container, that's back to zero bytes again. OK, back into the swagger, and if I look at my test one put, we have a curl command here that's the equivalent of what I did via this uh, swagger page. I'm going to bring up a command prompt, and I'm going to execute that curl command right here. Um, I'm going to change the text slightly. Um, this is my string of XML. I'm just going to put some extra characters in there just to show that it does change. OK, so that's my curl command to call the REST API. Back in the container, we refresh and we now have 102 bytes. Back to the swagger page and test to get. Here's the curl command to run the get map. Copy that into my clipboard and give myself some room and paste that into the DOS prompt and we get the XML back. This is my string of XML data. XML of XML, this is the important bit, the bit I added. It's the bit that makes it up to 102 bytes. And that has been retrieved from blob storage. And once again, blob storage, if we refresh, has gone back to being zero bytes. So there we go. go. Uh, a whirlwind tour of using the uh, Microsoft Azure blob storage with the Azure Blob Storage Adapter in ITX 10.03 to put and get content. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.